This is the eighth video on Introduction to Feedback. This particular video is going to focus on the impact of feedback for high order systems, and in particular proportional feedback. So previous videos used a number of examples and some analysis to illustrate that proportional design leads to changes in the behaviour for first and second order systems. This video is going to give some general observations for higher order models. So we've given an example higher order model here, which is a fourth order, AS plus B, of a CS to the 4 plus DSQ plus ES squared plus FS plus H. But you should note this is somewhat arbitrary. You could have a different uh, numerator here, you could have a different order, um, but we can't cover everything. And so we're trying to give indications of what happens with higher order systems. It's assumed that students are familiar with concepts of damping, overshoot and time constant. And it's noted that if you want to do a more rigorous analysis, then probably you'll need to study something like the root loci tool, which will be covered elsewhere. So first, let's summarise the scenario. We've got this closed loop. You can see a compensator M of S and a system G of S. And we're going to assume that the compensator is given by a simple proportional gain K. So if we calculate the closed loop transfer function for these two systems, then you'll see the answers given down here below. We've got K times AS plus B over what's quite a complicated denominator. Now, what's the key point here? The algebra and the root dependence are too complicated for simple analysis. And you will do that in the root loci tool. But here, we can't just look at it and give a simple uh, understanding of what's going on. However, there are some things we can do. So let's look at the closed loop gain. There's the closed loop transfer function. What do we think the closed loop gain might be? Well, to do the closed loop gain, you remember, we just need to substitute s equal to 0. And so we actually get a very simple answer. Here it is, kb over h plus kb. We could equally compute the closed loop offset for unit step, and that would give you h over h plus kb. I shouldn't perhaps have put GC of zero there because that's the closed loop offset. So the key observation here is there's always an offset for a finite gain K. And if you want to plot the dependence of the steady state gain upon K, you can do so. And it's just like in the shown in the video for second order and first order. So offset reduces for large K, but in practice, large K cannot be implemented. So if you have a high order system and simply proportional gain, you're likely to end up with an offset. What about convergence then? Because the denominator we're using here is quartic, it's not possible to determine the real parts of the poles by inspection. So we don't know what behaviours we've got at all. We cannot easily see the impact on pole positions of changes in K. And you need something like the root loci tool to do this. However, what we can do is give some numerical examples to give an indication of what might happen and establish the key thing is whether there are some common patterns. If you understand what the patterns are, then you're halfway there. Here's an example then. You can see we've chosen a particular G of S at the top, 5S plus 15 over S to the 4 plus 9S cubed plus 30S squared plus 42S plus 20. And then what we've done is we've said, right, we'll close the loop with some various proportional compensators. There they are, k equals 0 0.5, 1, 3, 10, 12.9. So if we do these in order, if I do k equals 0 0.5, you get this nice smooth response at the bottom here. But you'll notice, of course, a very large offset. The target's up here. The tar there's the target, 1. So we get a huge offset, even though otherwise the behavior looks quite nice. If I increase the gain to 1, I get a slight oscillation and a better steady state gain, and it still converges at a reasonable speed. If I increase the gain further still to k equals 3, what do you notice now? I'm beginning to get quite significant oscillation and overshoot. So although the steady state gain is, is increasing, so the offset's reducing, I'm now getting a lot more oscillation. And also, you'll see it's slow to settle. So compared to the blue and the red curve, when I've, put, I've increased the K, the settling time is now getting slower, so the poles are getting slower. If I now go to K equals 10, which is this light blue curve, what do you notice? I've now got very substantial oscillation and a very slow settling time. 
And finally, if I go to k equals 12.9, you'll see that the oscillation isn't really settling at all. It's wanting to oscillate on and on and on and on. And indeed, if I was to choose k bigger than this, you'll find the response diverges. So there seems to be a middle ground somewhere. Somewhere between k equals 1 and 3 is about the best you can do before the oscillation begins to dominate and the decay becomes too slow. This is a second example just to show that these observations are fairly generic. So you'll see I've given a different G of S, a slightly different set of choices of K, but they're relatively similar. And you'll see the same pattern with a small K, a reasonable response to a slight overshoot. As I increase K, more overshoot, K okay, more oscillation, increased K again, more oscillation, more overshoot, slower to settle, and so on. So you tend to observe K, you can increase K up to a certain limit and get some benefits, but if you start increasing K beyond that limit, then the oscillation will begin to dominate, and more importantly, the convergence will slow down, and eventually, if K is very large, here's the key point, you will go unstable, which is not something we observed for first and second order systems. So that's really critical that students recognize that for higher order systems, if you increase k too large, then you will get poles in the right half plane, you will go unstable. So some conclusions. For high order systems, the closed up gain and the maximum input still have, well, maybe not a simple, but they do have a link to the controller gain k. The convergence will get slower for larger k. And indeed, the system goes unstable for very large k, and that's quite important. If you have small k, you'll tend to get slow responses, so you tend to want a middle ground. You don't want k too small, you don't want it too large. As ever, the closed loop gain increases as k increases, but in general, for the sorts of k's that give you a reasonable convergence rate, you are going to have a significant offset. And so you'll notice the sum we've, we've given down at the bottom here, which is the same we said for first order systems and second order systems. You'll get an offset with simple proportional control, and so it tends not to be a good tool on its own for achieving desired behaviours, and that's particularly evident here with higher order systems, where if you try to increase k to reduce the offset, then the behaviour really does become unsatisfactory.